Hey everyone, welcome back to another video, and today it's finally fun, we have finally something interesting to talk about. We have some new NHL news, uh, we have a new signing coming out of Columbus. The Columbus Blue Jackets today have signed goaltender Elvis Merzlikens to a two-year, $4 million contract, and let's talk about it, because we don't have also a lot of other things to talk about. So, breaking down this contract, looking at it just from the start, based off of stats, playing what I expect him to develop into, I think it's a really good contract. At $4 million, it is a little steep, but they don't really have a goaltending tandem or even a lead goaltender right now. This season, they've split the minutes between Jonas Kopersalo and, of course, Elvis Merzlikens. So, they're gonna looks like they're going to be leading into um, with Merzlikens going into the future as their number one. But, uh, Kopersalo and Merzlikens are both signed up until 2021-2022, and then after that, they have no goal goaltender signed. So if they want to change the face of their goaltending in the coming up years, in the next three years really, more like two years I guess I should say, they have the ability to do so. But what makes this signing interesting is when you actually look at the stats that he put up, and in my opinion I think that overall he is a good goaltender and has a lot of potential. He is 26 years old still and he is developing. He was a third round pick from Columbus in 2014. And he's this is his first real year in the uh, in the NHL. Last year he spent two games with the uh, Cleveland Monsters in the AHL, and he won one and one with his record. And then after that he spent all of his time in Luego with the Swiss A League. So he spent a lot of time overseas in Europe. So it's going to take some time for him to develop to North American ice and get back into that game, especially as a goaltender. Only considering that he played two games in the AHL. But I can definitely see him developing into a nice piece. I think it is an overpayment for him right now, but it's not going to be an overpayment next year. I definitely think next year he will be a better goaltender. This year he had a 13-9 record, as, as I should say, with a goals against average of 2.35 and a save percentage of 0.923. So overall, decent numbers for kind of a guy who's splitting the net with another goaltender. And when you look at his you know, projected stats and what he could become, it is a good signing for them in the short term, but it's also not very risky because yes, you're paying him $4 million, but when you look at it in hindsight, he's a decent backup for you. You pay him $4 million, he's gone in two years. It's not like it's a contract that's going to, you know, handicap you for a long time in your cap salary because it's not going to be, you know, following you down the road as much as if you were to sign him to like a five-year deal at like, you know, 3.5 or even $4 million if you want to go for that long-term deal. Personally, I think giving a goaltender a bridge deal is always the best bet to go with. Um, the Jets gave Connor Hellebuck a bridge deal, and he played well, and we were able to get him signed. There have been a lot of other situations with bridge deals, and I think that it can work very well in today's NHL with a goaltender especially. So overall, I think giving Elvis Merzinkins a $4 million two-year contract as a bridge is his bridge deal, I think it's going to work out pretty nicely for Columbus. If he can develop into a decent starting goaltender for them, and then they can get their backup situation done, uh, they could definitely be looking good into the future. Um, a lot of people didn't even expect Columbus to be even in the playoff hunt this year after losing their almost their entire roster, including their starting goaltender in Bobrovsky. So the fact that Merzinkins could come in here with Corpusalo and play enough to get them almost into a playoff position, especially a wild card with losing all the guys that they have, especially on goaltending. So overall, I definitely think that he has potential to develop into a really good starting goaltender in the NHL, and I think that Columbus played their cards right with this deal, especially that the fact that it's only two years at $4 million, there really isn't a risk there. Like, people like to complain about sh contracts that are, you know, a little top-heavy on, like, short-term deals. Like, oh, you know, this is just restricting the cap and all that stuff. But how I look at a contract, if you're signing a guy to a one-year contract or a two-year contract and you're paying him, like, $5 million or $6 million or even around four, I guess I would say, and he's, like, a good player, similar to what Ms. Lincoln's is, kind of what Wayne Simmons was last offseason going into this season, people complain about, you know, giving up paydays like that. And I look at it like, why? You're giving a guy a one-year deal, a two-year deal. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, and then it's gone off your cap. Like, if you're in good situation, if you're in a good cap situation, your entry-level contract is three years, which means you can get three years, obviously, out of your good young players coming out of the first round and second round, so on and so forth. And if you play your cards right, you can afford to have these type of contracts where you're experimenting and giving bridge deals because you have these other guys on smaller capped deals. And overall, I think that giving out a contract like a bridge deal is a great, you know, thing to do. And I think more players should go for bridge deals. I think that, you know, you can actually get a lot more money long term if you take a bridge deal. So I definitely think that Merzlinkin's taking a bridge deal in Columbus 
actually, you know, putting a bridge deal on the table, it's the best decision for them at the time. And especially considering, you know, that there might be a influx in cap. We don't know what's going to happen with that yet because of the suspended season. Um, so we need to really take a look at all that once we can actually, you know, see what the outline is for the rest of the season moving forward. Because at this point right now, it's all still a guessing game. You know, Gary Bettman's saying, oh, we'll play in June, we'll play in July. We're not going to play in these small cities anymore. Oh, we are going to play in these small cities. And, well, you know, it's all over the place. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't even know what to expect for the cap situation. We don't even know if teams can sign players. We don't know what to expect. And there hasn't been a lot of signings because of that, because players are uncertain. So it's nice to see uh, some news coming out about some good signings. It's in, it's kind of encouraging because hopefully other teams will start to be able to, you know, take the leap to signing players. And hopefully, hopefully also this is a good sign that maybe teams and GMs are more aware of the situation than we are. Obviously they are. And they want, they kind of are getting more knowledge on what to expect for the cap change and all that other type of stuff. Because that's really, really important. When you look at the entire situation and what can happen, the cap situation, you know, the cap flux, whether or not you're going to have these conditional buyouts where they're not going to affect you and all these type of things like that. That's really important looking down the line, especially into next season. And especially with teams that are kind of needing to get close to the cap or are already close to the cap or have players coming up that are really important to sign off their entry level deals. So right now, it's kind of encouraging to see players signing, especially a bridge deal hopefully we can start to see a pattern of more players signing and we can start to get to see a normal normality return to the nhl and return to this time you know if we're not going to play the rest of the season we should at least know what's happening so we can kind of have an idea of what to expect moving on in the future so overall when i look at this trade i think it is a great move for columbus short term it could be a good move long term depending on how he develops in these next two years a $4 million contract isn't that bad. He's put up some decent numbers. This is his first NHL season, and his, in hindsight, really, it's basically his, it was this this season was his third time ever stepping foot really and playing a high caliber game on North American ice because he only played two games with the Cleveland Monsters in 2019, 2020. Uh, this season, right? So yeah, those were his first games. So when you look at it and compare it, to, you know, he played in the A for those two games, and then he came over and started 33 in the NHL. That's pretty important. Because it's a young guy who's getting used to the surface, getting used to the playing style, and it's really encouraging because he's 26. So hopefully he can, you know, develop nicely. We're just going to have to wait and see what happens with him. Overall, it is a good signing for them now in the short term, and it is encouraging for the league because hopefully we'll be able to see more signings to come soon. Anyways, guys, I'm Pig City Hockey. I hope you enjoyed the video. You know, if you're new to the channel and you just came across this video browsing around on YouTube, maybe consider subscribing. Post all different types of hockey content. And if you guys like that type of stuff, yeah, consider subscribing. And if you guys are already subscribed and all that usual stuff, you know, consider liking. Hope you enjoyed the video. Peace out, take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.